and be able to get in underneath that backbone for that second shot. When we finished our hind leg, the sheep's hind legs should be facing out the chute. Now I can do the top notch and with my free hand just fold that ear out of the road and shear around the ear. Very important when we're shearing weathers just to clean up around that head so when you step up the neck everything's done. To step up our neck, I like to use three steps and step out around your sheep. The first one is with your outside leg, then it's your inside leg, the third one is an adjustment for your balance and it should be end up slightly in front of your inside leg. My free hand, I like to just grab my sheep in under the corner of the jaw and support his head. I go one, two, three. Hand supporting his head, outside foot slightly in front of your inside leg, ready to go up the neck. To open up that brisket I like to use my elbow up against the side of his face and again grabbing your wool down in the brisket area, use your hand and especially your thumb to get in underneath that wrinkle and even if you have to bend your inside knee, get your shoulder down so you're coming in underneath that neck, following your free hand up. To come around the head, I like to just grab the ear and pull your head around as you make the blow. You will hardly have to use your handpiece to go around. You can just pull the sheep's head around. Now, to shear the shoulder, I like to just open that shoulder up, that shank area, and drop my hand down into the meaty part of the sheep's leg to go shear that shoulder area. From then, it's onto the long blow. If we've stepped straight up the neck, I like to just turn that foot in the direction I'm going and turn my sheep with my inside leg down to the long blow. Very important on the long blow is to have your outside leg tucked right, into none, right underneath those shoulder blades so your sheep, the front half of your sheep is basically up off the ground. My knee is in the flank area on this sheep. You should be able to feel this muscle on your knee. Done a long blow. I like to step over after I've got to the backbone. Oh, three shots in the back. And put my ankle on the hip bone of the sheep, leaving my front leg, my outside leg, in underneath the sheep. To get over that backbone, I like to just pick that head up. A little bend in the knees drops all your shoulder down so you can get good depth on that long blow. My outside leg is still hard up against those front legs of our sheep and toe pointed in. Coming up over the head, again, I like to bend my knees and put my free hand in underneath the sheep's head to support his head and I can pull that ear around any way I'd like to get around it, over the top, whichever way. Coming down this last side, Again, I like to get my free hand and just put it in under the sheep's jaw where it bends. There's a little channel where you can hold his head in a firm position. Coming down, to get down into that shoulder area, 
We release those legs. Bring your outside leg into that flank. A little step back. Adjustment on your inside leg and up and point those toes in. Sheep's head should be up above your knees. Free hand, again you can use that free hand to pull those fribs over, coming around, making sure you get them all in underneath, lifting the leg up. I like to use, get up on the, around the um, foot area so you can have room to take that front hock off and then drop it down to that knuckle with a slight twist in to flatten all this area out. You don't have to strain on your shoulder by lifting it up. It's just a little twist in. Down, as soon as I've cleaned those fribs, I like to let that leg go and get my fingers in underneath that elbow. My outside leg comes over and my, as I'm shearing down and my toe is right next to the sheep's tail. My inside leg comes back as I come down the last side. To go out the last hind leg, I like to again use my little finger's knuckle on this knuckle where the sheep legs bend. Also, with these three fingers, grabbing the skin and out the hind leg, rolling it over. Hand grip on your handpiece is very important. We can change the angle of the handpiece rather than changing the angle of your body and dispersing your weight from leg to leg. For instance, in this first blow down the belly, if you're set here over your sheep with your head and we get to there and we want to run that blow down to there, see how once we get there it slides? So if that blow keeps travelling, you're going to end up in there. So we've got to change the angle of that handpiece from there to there. And you can see by doing changing your grip on your handpiece, you can do it quite easily and comfortably rather than get to there and then have to move your body and your arm to get that angle. Especially over the pizzle as well, we can change it, the position on, of the comb and the handpiece by just moving your thumb around into the front of the handpiece. So we've gone to there. So we can come over that pizzle and then that thumb starts sliding back down. Out the leg, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can go out like that and if they're a little bit tight around here, is to come back in like that and you can see your thumb's going right around to the top of the, the handpiece. Or if we're going to come back in this way, we want to be able to pull our thumb right around the front of the handpiece. And then as we come around here, the thumb starts to slide back. To clean this side of the hock, handpiece comes right over like that and you can see your thumbs move right around to the top of the handpiece again. And then when we come to come in here, it's gone from there right around like that to get your angle. If we just leave your thumb in the one spot on the handpiece to get there, see your angle of your comb. The only other way is to really overstretch and we don't want to be doing that because straight away you're, you're off balance. We get down here to the tail. If we want to run that blow underneath the tail, either I overstretch my top half of my body or it's a lot easier and a lot more efficient just to move your hand on your handpiece. Then we these undermine shots, same thing to there. If we want a little bit of pressure on the bottom tooth, we just put, push the thumb up on the tension nut a little bit and a little bit of pressure like that it helps you hold that top tooth down. That goes for the same blow up the neck. That's a nice flat blow, so you keep your, hand, your thumb flat on the handpiece, from the flat part of the handpiece. But the next shot, when we start to get to there, see the bottom tooth is starting to rise off, so we just raise our thumb up to keep that bottom tooth down. When it's down, I 
take that little bit off there and then when we come underneath here, this flank, see your wrist is going to roll right around so we scoop up all that wool from behind that leg. It's the same when we get to the end of the long blow. Nice flat blows, it's the same hand grip most of the way along there but just here when we start to lift that sheep up, that bottom tooth tends to ride off the skin a bit. So it's just a matter of changing your thumb grip on your handpiece and you can see that bottom tooth will go back onto the skin. It seems to move around a little bit here when you manipulate this wrinkle. When we get to this point of the sheep, the sheep really drops off here. So we've come around and it's the same thing here. If we start to lift off, we just want to raise the thumb up a little bit. And then, then last of all, when we come out this leg, you've got uh, quite a little bit of an area here, but it's quite a hard bit to work around. So when we get to here, it's the same thing. Do you roll underneath that hamstring? We use that pressure on that tension nut again to get underneath that hamstring and out the leg. When we shear in our comfort zone, what we mean by comfort zone is the zone <coughs> where this, where this down tube swings in a, in a circular arc. There's no pressure on this down tube at all. It's when we get out of position, that's when this really comes into play. I'm going to demonstrate now, if we're shearing out here, say if the sheep's over there, the amount of pressure that's on this down tube over there, and it soon adds up, if you, especially if you're shearing the whole sheep out of position. So I'll just grab the scales, and what we'll do, I'll push this out, to the end, ed, edge of that comfort zone and you'll see that's up to a, over a kilo of pressure on the end of your hand, which is on the end of the handpiece. Vice versa, if we're shearing too close to your down tube and we're out of position this way, you can see it's up around a kilo that if that back joint is hitting the wall. And this plays a lot of importance, especially if you're starting to shear like 200 sheep a day and you've got that out there all day and the pressure on the back of your hand. The positioning to the down tube is, is important and this is one of the reasons why. I'll go to the neck blow and when we're going up the neck, we've got to have that, that line and the down tube hanging easy about halfway along the blow. So when we go up the neck, when we start our blow, the backwards pressure is pushing that down tube forward. And when we go up the neck, when we finish our blow, the, the pressure on the down tube is pulling that blow backwards. If we were shearing out of position, out there say, the whole time you're pulling out here and as we showed you before with the scale, the further we get out, the more pressure's there. So that's one of the main reasons why we have got to keep in position when we're shearing. Australia's wool industry needs shearers. Shearers who can produce day in and day out in what's one of the most skilled and physically demanding jobs in the world. It's a challenge. The concentration of a test cricketer, the strength of a weightlifter, the endurance of a marathon runner. Shearing easy is the mark of a well-trained, physically strong and focused individual. As a shearer, working smart means getting the most done with the least amount of effort from you and the least amount of strain on the animal. The shearing techniques and tips you will see in this DVD will identify the key principles of shearing quickly and efficiently without compromising quality. People at the top of their professions make the job look easy. That's what top shearers do, make a tough demanding job look like anyone can do it. Becoming a professional shearer means developing technique, concentration, strength and fitness that means you don't just make it through a day or a week, you get through the season fit and ready for the next. Whether you're a shed hand trying to get a pen or an experienced pro with many sheds behind you, you need to know the right technique. Like people, sheep breeds and individual sheep are all a bit different from each other. Different shapes, different bodies, different temperaments. The methods used in this DVD can be used as the basis from which you will be able to develop the technique to handle all sorts of sheep. This will result in an efficient shearing method that will require less effort and energy from you. 
And that's the trick to making shearing easy. It's not rocket science. A technique you can rely on is the key to being a great shearer. This DVD has been produced by Australian Wool Innovation to help you become a shearer. Australia's wool industry needs shearers. Shearers who can produce day in and day out in what's one of the most skilled and physically demanding jobs in the world. It's a challenge. The concentration of a test cricketer, the strength of a weightlifter, the endurance of a marathon runner. Shearing easy is the mark of a well-trained, physically strong and focused individual. As a shearer, working smart means getting the most done with the least amount of effort from you and the least amount of strain on the animal. The shearing techniques and tips you will see in this DVD will identify the key principles of shearing quickly and efficiently without compromising quality. People at the top of their professions make the job look easy. That's what top shearers do, make a tough demanding job look like anyone can do it. Becoming a professional shearer means developing technique, concentration, strength and fitness that means you don't just make it through a day or a week, you get through the season fit and ready for the next. Whether you're a shed hand trying to get a pen or an experienced pro with many sheds behind you, you need to know the right technique. Like people, sheep breeds and individual sheep are all a bit different from each other. Different shapes, different bodies, different temperaments. The methods used in this DVD can be used as the basis from which you will be able to develop the technique to handle all sorts of sheep. This will result in an efficient shearing method that will require less effort and energy from you. And that's the trick to making shearing easy. It's not rocket science. A technique you can rely on is the key to being a great shearer. This DVD has been produced by Australian Wool Innovation to help you become a shearer. Shear the shank. Then shear the side of the brisket and under the outside foreleg. Shear the inside brisket, clearing to the bottom edge of the belly. Take care not to damage the teats. Throw the belly wool clear of the sheep. Start on the inside stifle joint and clear the top of the leg. Start out on the inside hock and shear back around the crutch. Shear the bottom of the neck to the first wrinkle. Move second wrinkle with left hand and shear on the bottom side of the neck to the jaw. Shear the cheek around the ear and horns if applicable. Start on the front leg and shear deep on the shoulder to line up for the long blow. Keep the front leg low and pointed towards the chute. Start on the leg and shear in line with the neck area. Keep moving the sheep towards the chute. Shear from the eye and around the jaw. Shear from the jaw, following the neckline to the top of the brisket.
shear from the shoulder to the brisket, clear the top of the foreleg. Pull the ear forward and shear over it. Keep the comb tooth up against the base of the horn and shear the back of the head. Shear around the front of the horn and clear the cheek. Keep the handpiece parallel to the floor and shear across the pizzle. Continue shearing under the pizzle. There are many crutching styles. This is one style suitable for novices to avoid cutting hamstrings. Shear between the outside eye and ear to clear the cheek. Shear across the top knot and eye, then remove the shorn wool from the head. Place your inside knee on the sheep's belly to tighten the skin. Shear across the pizzle. Shear other side of pizzle and remove the wool. Start at the inside hock and shear around the crutch to the outside hock. Pick up the outside leg, shear down the leg and cut the wool on an angle. Turn the sheep onto the last side. Shear towards the tail and out to the top of the hock. Shear under the hock and under the tail. Shear over the tail, cutting the wool on an angle. Some owners may request a small bunghole crutch on sheep that are close to shearing, stud sale rams or lambs ready for market. Step up with inside foot and take extra care not to damage the fleece. Roll the sheep slightly to your inside foot. Keep pressure on the sheep's front legs. Control head by jaw. Let the sheep's front legs out and hold the head high between your knees. Pick up the sheep's front leg. 